Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to draw a day. It is 126 on the last day of March 2020, and thank goodness we're through March. That's one month down, one more to go. And how are we going to help get through it? We're going to draw together. So what do we got? Hopefully you got a sketchbook. Maybe you got some, some paper. Maybe you got just some blank something. All you need is a pen, a pencil, writing instrument, piece of charcoal, whatever you have. I happen to have a wonderful Cintiq 22 by Wacom, and we're going to draw something. This morning, I had a lovely class discussion with some MICA students through Zoom. It was fun, and I feel a little motivated. I still have about half a Mick Cafe coffee with three creams, and this should get us through this broadcast. Let's go. Let's go. Let's make some marks. What are we going to draw today, ladies and gentlemen? I don't need my headphones. I don't need my headphones right now. I had them on for a Zoom meeting, and uh, they kept my ears warm while the house warmed up. I think this afternoon I'm going to make a stew. I think I got some potatoes. I think I have some ground beef, uh, onion, green pepper. I'm going to do something with it. I don't really know how to cook, but we're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out. What is this feeling like? What is my subconscious telling me I need to draw today? And I think it's going to be a walking, uh, sassy, robotech, robot uh, thing. I think it's going to be some kind of monster, robot. Why? Why do I think this? Because I've been playing a lot of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and I'm thinking about those divine beasts. Those divine beasts are pretty cool. You know, these big walking robot things. So I'm thinking about some kind of crab, some kind of crab robot that's uh, got a little like pincer teeth things, and he's got um, uh, like a friend, dude, like riding up here. I think that'd be pretty cool. And then he's got some, I don't know, some propellers, maybe some roto roto propeller back there. That makes sense. Gunship. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's a prop ways in the water. I think that would be. Yes. Yes. That's what we want. We want to turbo fans. Turbo fan back there. It's got these these like claw stomper feet thing. I think that would be fun. I think that'd be fun to draw today. So we're gonna do some kind of character like like this crop. You mean three, three, it doesn't make any sense. Limb goes down and then up and then down again. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. And then some shielding, something like that. And then he's, he's going to do that kind of shape. This is going to be fun. I think this is going to be fun, ladies and gentlemen. This is how we get ideas. We just kind of start drawing stuff until uh, something makes sense. Maybe he has like a mustache, some kind of antenna business. I think that's cool. Sure, let's keep going with this. This is fun. Why not? Why not? We got energy. We got a life to live. We got all one love to give. Uh, we will survive. We will survive. Hey, hey. Oh, now go. Walk out the door. Um, I think this is going to be fun. So, what? We got a little horizon line here. This is what we were doing in the previous lecture. Uh, earlier today is some kind of uh, you know looking at things with different points of view. I was thinking about uh, Simon Stalin hug from that's what it was. That's what I'm inspired by the the loop, the story of the loop. Simon Stalin hug. I keep wanting to say like Stalin Skarsgård, but it's uh, Simon Stalin hug. How, this this gentleman, the loop, things from the loop, uh, Swedish maybe, I don't know, somewhere northern northeastern European, he does these great paintings that look like just regular landscapes, and then some creepy sci-fi thing is coming out, my artist friend Dan Beeson, let me borrow the book he bought, I need to buy this book, when I get a job, uh, rule number, first thing, I'm going to go on Amazon and order Tales from the Loop. Because this, this movie's going to come out, and it's not going to be as cool, but it's still going to be pretty cool. 
Neat, neat stuff. Hauntingly beautiful retro sci-fi art on CNN.com. CNN. I should have to blow up on CNN. I guess I have to make something if I'm going to blow up on CNN. Anyway, love this guy's work. So this will probably be a little homage to uh, him in, in that great series. So drawing inspired by uh, Simon Stalinhag Hag. I wish I knew how to say it. Sorry. You know, we got this coffee is not getting drunk fast enough. There we go. There we go. We just chugged it. We just chugged the coffee. That's right, L. That's right. We just finished the coffee. It was cold. It tasted rough. What's up, L? Glad L's here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Let's go. Let's go. What do we do? We make a mess. Then we clean it up. See, I, I started this drawing on the left of my canvas. I need to stretch it out. Image canvas size. Uh, L, I sent your wife a link to the video that we did this morning. That sounds dirty. It's not. It's the demo. I sent it to the Google Drive and then to her the link. So she should have that now. Canvas size. We're going to expand it to the left. That means we need to put the button to the right. Um, what are we? Width? Six inches? We need more than that. Six inches? Six and a half inches? No, ten. We need ten. Yes. That's right, L. We need ten inches today. Six ain't going to do it. You know, sometimes six is okay. But for what we're drawing, we need that breadth of the wild. So we got our you know, the robot guy kind of in the foreground here. We need a little more height. Image canvas size height. Let's go. Let's, that's where the six needed to be. It needed to be six high, ten wide. Those are two great numbers. Six and ten. Oh, great. Six, ten. Both three letters. Very different sounds. One syllable. Easy to say. Six, ten. Sixty. It's a lot of things. 60, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes to an hour. It's good. Good numbers. Six by ten. We got our newsprint gray in the background. Am I recording this? Yeah, I'm gonna record. I'm gonna put this on YouTube later. This is gonna be a good one to be really dumb. It is Tuesday. And what do we say about Tuesdays? I don't know what we say about Tuesdays. The good thing about Tuesdays, I'm very excited, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a fish fan. And tonight at 8:30, the band Fish is gonna do a live stream on livefish.com, broadcasting a show from 2014 of their performance at Meriwether Post Pavilion in our very own Columbia, Maryland. Yes, I live in Pennsylvania, but that's the closest outdoor music venue that I prefer. I haven't actually been to the Hershey Park one. I hear it's good. I think Fish is playing there this summer if the tour goes on, but I heard that sold out so fast because that's the only Northeastern show that they'll be doing this year. So we have we're gonna have our character, which is gonna be this crazy, crazy thing. I don't know. Where's my horizon line? Is there? Yeah. Horizon line dimmed down a little bit. Boom. Um, if it's a crab monster, I, I imagine it's gotta be on the beach. It, it, right, right. It came out of the ocean, and now it's on the beach. So we're gonna have the ocean back here somewhere. New layer. Uh, where, why am I not? What am I drawing? Brush? I'm making... Oh, it's an eraser. Why? Why? If only Photoshop had some kind of neural interface. The thing in the ocean is going to be kind of green. It would be fun. Maybe it's like low tide. I don't know. Uh, was recently out in... Uh, my friend Joanne and I did some road tripping, and we've talked a little bit about this on the show, that I've just completed a big West Coast trip, and one of the coolest places, we went to so many cool places, but on the Pacific Northwest, there are some awesome coastline stuff, and uh, unfortunately, I don't think, 
Do I have any photos here? Um, here's my wonderful friend Joe, and this is one of the coastline places that we went to, and it was this rocky coast, and it was kind of smoky. You see how the, the we have the water is this kind of sagey green, actually, like it's gray and green, and the rocks get red and green. It's a little bit, there's all these all these various colors in here. We're gonna use this as inspiration for the background um, of our scene today. So thanks, Joe. Great, great having you along on the trip. She took these wonderful pictures. Shout out to Joe. Wonderful photos uh, of some uh, a little sea life living. There was little crabby guys. This is awesome macro photography. Super cool. And then we did some, uh, oh, look, look how dainty and cute I look in a tree. Oh, isn't that adorable? Isn't that adorable? Love the redwoods. We're going to go back to the sea life uh, on the coast with Joe. All right, this, is gonna, this image is going to go over to the left side. And I'm going to also drag it into here. And we're going to use that as a guide today, ladies and gentlemen. Why do I say ladies and gentlemen? Because that's from another podcaster, the Spiffing Brit, who does wonderful, hilarious videos, breaking video games. And he talks about tea, drinking lots of tea, and thanking the queen, and more tea. I wonder if he's going to, I wonder if he's going to change his tune now that uh, the queen is retiring and that the prince is going to come up. Good afternoon, Sir Brandon. Sir Brandon. Good afternoon, Maria. Oh my goodness, so wonderful to have you uh, with us. Uh, haven't talked to Maria in like 20 years. Welcome, welcome here. That's very cool. I've been following your Facebook. We're drawing today. We're going to take some inspiration from a West Coast trip. I did, and I lost this photo already. Where the heck did it go? Oh, I moved it. Uh, we'll get it. We'll get it back later. Here's a here's another one from that era. Here's here's me, and Joe took this wonderful picture, looking off the Northern California coast. This is by Arch Rock in Northern California, Southern Oregon, somewhere in that area, and it is just a remarkable, remarkable piece of land. Let's take you to the Google Earth. Um, we're going to go Arch Rock in uh, California. Oh, Oregon. Oregon is what? Oregon Coast. Google is going to take us there, and we're going to get some nice reference of that whole area, what that's like, because that's going to educate our drawing of the day. Google Earth's amazing. I was just talking to the students about 30 minutes ago about using Google Earth for getting inspiration. You can zoom in, go to the satellite view. So we click on the upper left, hit satellite up. And if you're using this from a computer, it might work on the phone, but I'm not sure. You can go from a computer and then find a 3D enable globe view button. We're gonna hit that. And this should give us some like 3D altitude information. Sometimes some areas are better than others. You can hold control and then orbit around using the control button and the left click and we can see what this environment kind of looks like so I'm imagining this rocky coast uh, maybe with some waterfalls and some sea spray and all that kind of stuff sorry I'm moving kind of fast this image this is not one of the better high-res locations that Google Earth has data on but this is where I was and it was super cool so we're gonna use that for a little bit of inspiration today it's kind of brain loading. There's some trees on some rocks here. There's this green teal oceany bit. So I'm going to sample these colors. I'm just going to copy this bit and uh, copy and then paste into here. So we have just a little color reference for what we're going to be doing um, over there. Well, no, we'll saturate it a bit for the sake of the drawing. Uh, like you do, like you do. Uh, and I have, I do have a picture. This is this is Joe again, and we have some rocks. This is going to be on this side, this side of the image. Very cool. What do we got going on? 14 minutes already in. That was a long introduction. Let's draw this thing. Boom. All right. So we want to get the background to kind of match the theming here. So we have. Uh, I'm going to pick this flat gray 
and airbrush that. What do we have? It's a very light top, 75%. Um, nice fog there, pretty cool. And then we have some rock. We're gonna put some rock in the background. Uh, there, maybe there's another rock, a little smaller one here. Uh, maybe it's a bigger rock. Maybe it's a like a big cliff kind of thing. Yeah, that's that feels pretty good. There's going to be a tree up here that's kind of doing its thing. And there's going to be a couple trees going off this thing over here, and maybe one more uh, rock in the background distance. That's fun. Cool. And then in the foreground, who's calling me? Uh, that's my mom calling me. I'll call her back. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna text uh, Mama and let her know I'm okay. Middle of a stream, and uh, get back to her. Mom's good. Mom's 80. She's in that high risk factor right now, uh, but she's staying at home. Uh, middle of stream right now. No, we'll call you back. Ba boom. So got that, got that back there, and we want some, you know, this this crab's gonna be walking out of the cove, onto the coast. Uh, good friend Alex Giannini, I'm thinking about him right now. He's doing some, you know, some lectures and talking about books and comics. I'm sure in in uh, Norwalk, Connecticut, somewhere like that, back in Connecticut. Now, Alex, what would you, if you watch this stream, what would the name? of this crab monster be and is he a cthulhu guy is it another science fiction story you know does he exist in the dune universe probably not because this is the oregon coast help me come up with a little narrative for the great robotic sea crab monster that's coming out of the ocean and then there's going to be maybe a horseshoe crab here that's like what is that thing and he's got his little shell i don't even know if the horseshoe crabs are up in the pacific northwest I mean, we had them a lot in Connecticut, isn't that right, Maria? We had a lot of those weird horseshoe crabs on Long Island Sound. And we're like, Ew, who wants to go swim in that water? We got those monsters coming out of the sea. Maybe you changed my mind. Maybe you've had a good time swinging. Uh, swimming. Swimming. Swimming in Connecticut. Boom. Honestly, I have not spent much time in Long Island Sound myself. I did a little bit of sailing there once, a little bit of sailing, and that's all you need to do. A little bit of sailing, that's all you need to do. I did more sailing in the bay, Chesapeake. Chesapeake Bay sailing is a good time. Got to dodge, you know, freighters every once in a while. I wonder what body of water is cleaner, Long Island Sound or the Chesapeake Bay. Feel free to vote in the comments uh, which one you think is cleaner. I mean, I went swimming in Chesapeake once, and it was gross. There was this like filthy kind of snotty looking stuff, but that was kind of an industrial waterway leading into the Baltimore Harbor. Don't recommend that. Don't recommend that. Thank you, Mark James, for taking us on your boat. But that um, that sea snot that everyone was covered with, uh, uh, don't recommend. Don't recommend it at all. We're just going to put a couple things in the background here. And this is going to educate us for later. Uh, what we're going to do is it becomes kind of cliffy shaped. It's darker at the base. And then a little bit of green as we're seeing kind of mossy build up um, on the side of that rock. It's above it. And this is kind of nice. We have like a direct reference right above there. But we do want to make this our own. So we're going to, we're going to really pale. Wow, it's funny. I'm picking that color. Look how light that is. It's all about context. So the sky behind there is really light, really, really white relative to um, the foreground. And then that rock is that color. And then the foreground edge of the other rock is this color. That looks about right. Cool. That's fun. That's fun. This um, sea green in the picture is very light because we're looking through a lot of fog to get to it. Look how gray that is, but it's all re all relative. So we're going to crank up that color just a little bit there. Right. That's fun. Rocky thing, rocky coast. Um, there's that there. Do something here. It's a little darker. This bit, that's fun. Why am I using the word fun so much? Because John Boy Media is all about talking about baseball 
in the fun kind of way. If you guys are fans of baseball, which I don't expect many of you to be, but if you are, if you're out there baseball fans, you'll recognize John Boy Media who blew up earlier this year by calling out the Houston Astros for some horrific cheating, a pitch call stealing uh, scandal, scandal, and then baseball, uh, Major League Baseball put on some fines and some bans and some like you know, titles being stripped and whatnot. A little bit of mossy, mossy color there. That's cool. That's cool. Maybe there's a little, you know, bit of blue sky that's kind of sneaking out. But mostly this is a kind of foggy Pacific Northwest, rainy soaked kind of day. Don't do 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 do. There's a little tree there, kind of bracken the same. All right. This is just enough to get us. It's just gonna place us in in an environment, something like that. There's gonna be some waves, water. I don't know, it's probably some sea foam. This is it's fine. It's fine. All right, let's work on our guy. Looks like I was painting half of that on uh, this guy here, and we're just gonna go with it. This this is already established enough to uh, keep. Let's just keep working. Let's just flatten it all out, work all of this layer together. So I'm going to pick the background color and just kind of lighten up you know, just over the top so we have enough area to paint over what's happening here. This is just our underdrawing or underpainting kind of thing. You know, water as it gets close to us is going to be a little bit darker and he's going to be shadowing the ground here. Just doing that, doing that, doing that, doing that, doing that, doing that. I forgot to send out a link to this to my art party um, group, but you know they're not really commenting on my work anyway, so we'll just let them find this on their own. We'll just let them find this on their own. They'll find it. Well, if they want to join and participate, that's fine. If they don't, you know, whatever. I'm not gonna hold it against somebody for not watching my stream. There is so much good content out there right now, ladies and gentlemen. So much good content. John Boy Media I mentioned. Rogan's got some funny stuff. Burt Kreischer. Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz is so freaking funny. If you watch Joey Diaz, I can't blame you. I can't blame you for that. You can watch uh, you know, any, any, everybody and everybody's podcasting right now. Much love goes out to my teacher friends who are trying to figure out technology. I know all y'all professors ain't that great with technology, but you know, you know a lot about teaching people. So, uh, you know, good luck to you all there. I'm going to paint over this, uh, this thing. Let's paint over that. Cool. I'm feeling good about this. Silhouette does so much for us. Just a little bit of silhouette um, in the distance can give us uh, just what we need when it comes to inspiring people with something in the background, something going on. Uh, that's fine. We'll figure out something to do with this area later. I'm not really sure what that's all about. Let's start massing in with some color tone this shape. So little, we're imagining there's a lot of fog and a lot of moisture in the air uh, for this scene. We had some really serious fog come in. Was it yesterday, Brandon? Was it two days ago? We had the thickest fog. Thickest, thick, thick like a milkshake fog here in Southern Pennsylvania. Hey, Kembo, hope you're doing well. Um, thanks for chiming in. Thanks for mentioning that you are here, sir. Oh my goodness, Brandon sent me a link. F images, fineartamerica.com, steampunk giant crab attacks lighthouse. A lighthouse, that's a good idea. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> this is some Cthulhu type thing. Oh wow, who did this? Wow, that's fun. <laughs> oh, I wish I thought of that first. That's a great painting. Man, that's silly. I mean, the anatomy here is a little weak, but we, you know, we can develop that and work on it. I don't know who did this, but they need a high five. They need a stern high five. Bam! Good job drawing crabs attacking lighthouses. Yeah, we can put a little lighthouse back here. Let's put a lighthouse, but I think our crab friend is going to be a uh, architecture aficionado and, uh, would probably respect respect the lighthouse. I think they would uh, 
it would understand. Oh, that's not a good place to storm the beach. Um, lighthouse thing, kind of over here like that. Really, there's so there's a bunch of really awesome lighthouses on the Oregon coast. Um, I kind of stopped by one. I forget the name of it, but it was right on that cliff, looking really cool. Um, our friend Roberta out there showed us the lighthouse on the cliff. Uh, yeah, the, the color's not great there. We'll work on that. We'll work on that. It needs to be a little cooler. A little bluer. Just kind of overlay. Lighthouses are pretty fun. We don't have a lot of nice lighthouses in Maryland. We have some like little spotty bits, but not like the classic lighthouse that you see in New England, Cape Cod, Maine. Um, Pacific Northwest. It's got a lot of really cool lighthouses, but they got that fog, you know. They have strong need for lighthouses um, out there. I don't know if the fog is as big of a deal in the uh, mid-Atlantic. All you watermen types, uh, please join in the comments if you have experienced terrible fog in the, the Maryland region. See, that color doesn't work at all. It needs to be a cooler. It needs to be a cooler color. It needs to be a cooler color. Uh, this morning, caffeinated Tom has been brought to you by. Mick Cafe, locally owned and operated McDonald's. Uh, I, they're wearing their gloves today, so I believe this is a COVID free beverage. Don't forget to hydrate. Coffee's diuretic. Gotta get your hydrate on there. Elk Neck State Park has a fun lighthouse, Brandon says. All right. <laughs> Brandon wants. This this claw to have uh, something in uh, you know this crab to have something in its claw with a big shape. Well, Brandon, I hear you. You are correct that I should do something like that, but I'm going to be wrong here and err on the side of. Um, uh, he's going to be a little bit more manageable. I've already decided I want some buddy to be this like there's a there's going to be a person sitting on top of this thing up here. Uh, I've already decided that. Why? Yeah, I don't know. I kind of like this scale for this guy a little bit better. Um, I don't know what that person exactly is going to be doing. Maybe there's like a, he's got some like ropes. He's controlling, like it's a weird lasso kind of chariot style control system. Analog controls for a clearly digital robot, right? But I don't want to be too much like the other drawing that you sent, which was great. Of uh, crab monster holding a ship in its limb. Um, some marines are kind of amazing. One of my favorite images of all time, of all time, goes back to the Great War, and it's of a U-boat that had washed ashore in England. And I think I have a folder that is just of powerful images that has it. No, nope, not seeing it, not seeing it. But it's really foggy and really spooky. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. U boat washed ashore in might have been Ireland or Scotland. And the photo is just so creepy. Yeah. Okay. Please be with SMU one eighteen. Look at this photo. How incredible is that? Like compositionally, and it's it's monotone. But I mean, you have you, you didn't have really color photography back then. I think this was in the after the first war. I could be wrong, but you have such great scale, low horizon. This is an intimidating form. We have the shadow and uh, a lot of this metal paneling, and then you have clear scale of the people that are below. And then there's probably some, some there's a hatch on the U-boat that gives you a sense of how big a person is. This, I think, is in my subconscious. This image was in my subconscious for the kind of scale and kind of proportion and scale and stuff that we want this robot creature to be. Not like super huge, more manageable kind of human size. I mean, this is such a good image. We're going to drag this to our desktop and then incorporate that picture. Um, somewhere up in here. We'll just keep it maybe in the corner as we work. Maybe the lower corner down here. Pretty cool. That's that's something I'm thinking about. 
bum, 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 bum. You bow. Uh, bum. What's up, Josh? Josh Hardy, former co-worker, tuning in. What's going on, man? Thanks for hanging out. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to like and subscribe here. You can send likes. You can do whatever you want. I'm drawing a giant crab today. Crab robot character. Uh, did not... You know, when I first did the sketch, I didn't think about arms in this guy. I have, like, the, the legs um, that he's going to be walking on. He's got quadruped kind of leg system. And let's see. Maybe, like, little tiny like little tiny control arms would be fun. Like, up in front. He's just got little feet here, kind of kind of hands. Maybe a little claws that are just kind of small. Uh, I'm thinking about another artist did uh, a little robot guy called the Fiddler, and he had these little like little tiny hands, big body, and then like bazookas and cannons and got like guns and stuff coming off the side. But it was a really good little robot. I just love the name the Fiddler. Like if the Fiddler, like Fiddler on the Roof. You think about uh, this kind of uh, crazy person with a with a musical instrument making songs that are great. But that person's definitely crazy and not very threatening. Fiddler, and this was a this drawing that I'm thinking about in my mind was this giant mechanical walk and tank thing with guns and it had these tiny arms for like playing a violin. It was just an ironic uh, image that I thought was kind of great. I wonder if I could find that too. Uh, concept art. I'm just, I'm, I don't even know if this will come up. Fiddler mech drawing. That, I wonder if that'll find it. It did! Hot, sh hot dang. Hot dang. Uh, Pinterest on Pinterest. Uh, Fiddler Flying Robot Deviant Art. Flying Debris is the artist. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Flying the Fiddler by Flying Debris on Deviant Art. I love this. It's got some cannons, it's got some walking legs. Uh, Yukitakumuki.deviantart.com. Flying Debris is a different artist. This, these are different artists. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Following this link could be dangerous. DeviantArt.com is a concept art, uh, art sharing page, photos, all kinds of stuff. But isn't this ironic? It's really fun. Definitely military inspired vehicle. You got some big old Gatling gun, got some 20, 30 millimeter auto cannon thing on the left, rockets in the back, uh, 762 or 556 five, minigun up front, and then these arms. These look very pretty. There's a winch. This detail is great, and the artist chose to put a humanoid for scale reference on the side. Smoke launchers, intake, radar, uh, optical sensors, all kinds of stuff. This is just, the artist for this has done a lot of thinking about how robotics work and how military equipment works. I can recognize all the components of this based on their military contemporary equivalent. Very cool stuff, very cool stuff. That's what I'm thinking of. Little fiddler arms. It's got little tiny arms for doing stuff, manipulating things, interacting with uh, objects that are of a human size or of the controller size, kind of stuff. Yo, uh... <laughs> Brandon's like, so he's a friendly crab. Trying not to get in trouble. Yeah, I think that's it. It's just a very curious uh, crab dude. He's got little arms. He's got his hands kind of small, maybe. Maybe there's some kind of extendo uh, track thing. So you see how I'm drawing? My line is now that dark and like desaturated blue. Um, what? So I originally intended for those that turbine to be in the back. What if it was in the front, like a hammerhead kind of thing? Was that interesting? Was that interesting? No, I think if, if the if the engine was in the front off of the mustache, then when the legs moved, it would hit those. So, no, I don't, I don't think that's going to work. We're going to put those. Um, we'll leave these as there would be some kind of sensor, some kind of probing um, must mechanical sensor thing, I think. I think that'll be cool. I think that'll be cooler that way. Some kind of probe. That's, that's interesting. And then we like to have little zigzags. And then this whole engine assembly, I do want to move it above and behind so it's out of the way. Let's um, kind of 
be light and paint over that. Does that make sense? Make it really dim. Uh, let's select it. Alt Nuv. Yeah, up there, up there makes more sense. So let's get a little bit of this green worked into the belly. So we have some reflection color here. Pretty cool. That's fun. Shape of the body reminds me of that spaceship from the 80s, that wonderful 80s Disney sci-fi movie, Flight of the Navigator. Flight of the Navigator, one of my favorites. Really weird to watch today. Really weird to watch that film today. But man, when I was a kid, it's like, dude, I want an alien friend with a cool spaceship that can take me to Mach 20. Those little uh, crazy little alien bits that he like those little like, snotty aliens that were on his spaceship like a little uh, aquarium of strange uh, curiosities from all over the universe uh, was was very strange to me seeing that in that movie Flight of the Navigator pretty wild a lot of spooky stuff in that movie government conspiracy type stuff Start working on a silhouette. You got some, maybe you've got a little like doodads and odds and ends and sensory bits. Maybe there's a barnacle or two kind of hanging off. You know, he's been buried underwater for a while. And uh, there's some kid with a baseball hat, you know, homage to Josh Hardy who's watching. You know, this this is definitely an Orioles fan. You know, it's got to be a Baltimore Orioles fan that ends up in the Pacific Northwest is like, that is a giant mechanical crab dog. We're going to get in there and ride it. Clearly from Dundalk. Yeehaw! We're riding the crab. On. Let's go, O's. We ain't having a baseball season this year. Let's go, O's. God, I hope they're better this year than they were last year. That was rough. Come on, Crush Davis. I hope you're getting some good batting practice in the off season. This crab's like, who are the O's? What are you talking about, dude? Engine, a little more silhouette back there. Yeah, that feels good. The turbine engine kind of thing that uh impeller, you know, propeller that's inside of some kind of uh, apparatus. Thinking about James Bond Thunderball, that wonderful underwater fight scene, like scuba diver fight scene, circa 1975. <laughs> Everyone's underwater fighting in that movie. That's great. There's probably some fins. So I'm thinking this is going to be made with like off-the-shelf components. It's not going to be some crazy sci-fi, uh, you know, futuristic uh, structures. It's going to be like carbon fiber, some metal, something. I don't know. I'm just having fun here. All right, we're going to think about the joints. It's got the sea legs. It's going to be pretty strong. That's going to be durable. It's going to be some kind of rotational. Pivot joint thing there, and then the leg bit is going to be pretty durable. Maybe there's like a knee pad type business. Um, little sensors like pressure sensor nodes that are going to be coming off of that, like some spikes, and then piston toe pad kind of business. Um, yeah, sorry, Nathan. He's like, I adopted the whole word business from you. That was something you said a lot. Like, what's this business here? I worked for Nathan on a game called Ashes of the Singularity. Oxide did. Um, Nathan comes from the Midwest, and they use the word business for everything. Like, what's this business? I'm going to order a meal, uh, get it with this business and this business. And I just thought that's funny. So I've adopted it for my own purposes. Oh, yeah, we got to have some seaweed. Maybe there's a little bit of seaweed hanging on that sensor package right there. 
Yeah, that's cool. That's feeling good. Yeah, he came right out of the ocean. Came right out of there. Got some goo. Got some ocean goo. That's fun. Having a good old time. So the back leg is going to be less contrast than the front leg. So I'm going to leave it mostly in silhouette. And there's some water splashing up off the back, the back leg there. It's kind of sea foam green kind of color. Um, and then against the, the background, maybe it's a little darker, that splash. I'm not really sure. There's some waves coming in. Is that fun? Is that cool? Yeah, I think so. That's pretty cool. The water, especially when it's when water's flat, it's gonna be very reflected. So it'd probably be very dark. If he's still walking like half, half in the surf, half out of the surf, it's gonna be pretty dark underneath, and then uh, and then it gets more reflected, just kind of on the highlight where it's really flat. That's cool. Finishing up the silhouette here. Maybe some kind of knee protection structure. Um, pivot bit. We have those like these these little sensors are little conical shapes. And they remind me a little bit of the edges of pressure mines, but also those spikes that you see on crabs. It's, it's inspired by a couple things. Things at the same time. I need to just do some line work to establish and make to make some decisions here. Maybe there's some kind of suction pad. That'd be cool. Like the, the base of the feet has a octopus kind of suction device. And then he's got little toes for walking on rocks and bits. That'd be, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Do, 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 do. Sands. A little lighter, this green, this greenish kind of sandy color. A little bit of uh, moss and something growing on these rocks here. Those are cool. Let's darken it a bit. Darker. No, too not dark enough. Too bluer, blue and dark for this area. Trying to work the whole canvas. Trying to bounce around. Not not get too focused in just one area. And keep it moving. Charlie Barron says from minute to walk minute. Keep her moving. Out in Wisconsin. Cool. Let's finish the silhouette here. Uh, forearms are going to be a little lighter. We're going to work. We got to work some warmer colors into this guy eventually. Maybe just a little bit of rust kind of in the joint, maybe in some edges. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Just a little bit. Like he's he's not a he's not a new robot. He's been around a little bit. He's been underwater for a minute. So we're gonna think about where all those joint locations are and just maybe maybe where the joints are, the metal rubs against other bits of metal. And hey Dan, what's going on? So the metal rubs against other bits of metal and then it takes that coating off, that anti uh, corrosion coating that you put on metal when it goes underwater. And so that that rubbing area is exposing the metal underneath, and that's where it probably would rust from. So we're going to draw these little rust lines coming off of where the edge. Dan, thanks for here, man. Thanks for uh, saying you enjoy the streams. Imagine it. For sure. For sure. Uh, Brandon's like, if he is mechanical, will he have the exhaust or intake where his gills would be? That's a good point. What is his fuel propulsion source? He's got this little turbine thing, and he's moving a lot of armor around. And he's underwater. I mean, how do real submarines work? I mean, the old ones were diesel electric. So when they were on shore, they had a diesel generator type thing, like a freight train, 
um, and then they had batteries to run them underwater. So would would it be a, would a snorkel be a good idea? Maybe. I don't know a lot about the biology of crabs. Um, you know what their gill apparatus is. Maybe this is a good time to learn about that. Let's go up. Uh, Marilyn blue crab gills. Um, is there? I. What are we? The internet is, is frustrating sometimes. All right, someone someone did a nice little drawing of a blue crab. Anatomy of a blue crab. What? Where's the the gill? Is uh is inside? It looks like like under the shell. Okay, so there's got to be some vents that can let seawater in and then oxygen to. Uh oh, this is gross. Ugh, that's a crab. It's been cooked, and those are the gills underneath the shell. All right, all right. So there's got to be some kind of venting on the side to let oxygen in. So I haven't eaten, you know, even though I live out, you know, around Chesapeake, I haven't had that many crabs, to be honest with you. And if I do eat crab, it's going to be crab cake. You know, someone has already prepared it. I've had a couple crab parties. And when I worked at Paraxis, we did a couple crab parties. So we got to have some gap um, intake thing here. Let's just do that. That's kind of cool. And maybe he's got, a, you know, emergency torpedo tubes in case things are really hairy. Door over there. Door over there. He's really crabby. He needs to lay a smack down. There's a little bit of red in the joints. Uh, places where things are, are kind of rusty. It's kind of cool. Let's darken that in. Let's darken that in. Let's darken that in. Let's darken that in. Um, you know, ladies and gentlemen who've been following my stream, Brandon's going to be asking a question in a second. Tom, why haven't you flipped the image yet? Why haven't you flipped the image yet? Okay. Okay. I hear you. I'm going to do it right now. Let's do that. Let's do it together now. Image, image rotation, one, two, three, flip horizontal. Boom. How does it feel? Well, now we can establish our compositional kind of elements. The, the center of the crab is over to the left side of the canvas. That means either we need to bring in the right side or expand the left. I prefer to expand the left here. We have uh, a 10 inch image that goes across six by 10. We're going to expand it out. Let's go double. Uh, maybe a little bit longer wide. Let's move it out to that side uh, to the width of 12. Let's see what that feels like. And then we'll just copy uh, this part of the canvas. And uh, control C, control V, move it over here and stretch it out. So we can, we can hold shift and distort that. And then we, we keep some of our colors. How's that feel? Does that feel good? I kind of think this this cove maybe is like a little gap. That's cool. There's a tree up here. Does that feel good? Rocky bits, that sandy bit. See, we're just creating chaos and then hoping inspiration arises from the mess. Sometimes you just gotta flip the table over, see where the bones land, and then clean up your mess from there. All right, this is this is pretty cool. This is feeling pretty good. So that that back leg looked a bit like a rock way off in the distance. So we're gonna need a little bit more. Um, contrast there and a little bit more uh, information to make it really pop up off the background. So there's the water is coming around it, it's splashing up the edge. That's pretty cool. Some kind of wave coming in. This is fun. I'm having a great time. Hope you're all having a good time watching. You know, don't feel like you need to hang out the whole time. I'm going to be doing this for about an hour. It's 2.15. When did I start? Started at... It's going on for 50 minutes right now. Let's see if we can do another 45 minutes and get as far as we can in 45 minutes. And if you got to go somewhere else, know that this art is going to be up. It's going to be online. 
could check it out at face, you know, here. Uh, I don't, you know, most robots get the bad rap because they have these red eyes and it's just very obviously like this Terminator kind of death machine thing. We're not going to do, we want this to be a little friendlier. So we're going to go bright green. Bright green eyes. Maybe little pupils on the inside. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And it feels a little bit more like that Simon Stellenhag inspirational art. Stellenhag? I don't know. Stalin? 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 I mean Stalin. Maybe that's like a little yellow. Just add a little yellow in the propeller, maybe. Um, we'll, we'll revisit that in a little bit. Not really feeling. I don't know what to do with that yet. Too dark. Blue line, blue kind of dark line. Okay, what isn't clear here? That's the next thing we want to establish. Is if we had to stop this stream at any point, have we? left the most important marks on the table or can we make those right now what is the most important thing to communicate okay we have a leg we have a, the kind of arm area and then this is going to be the foot with the kneecap bit to establish that establish that shaded side same with the back there is the big uh, interface between the 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 leg and that's going to be a little bit lighter because it's in the background. That's there. Something like that. Something like this. So the, the surfaces that are looking straight down are going to be the darkest. And then the surfaces that aren't looking straight down are going to be a little lighter. Cool. So this whole area in the middle is getting a little confusing. Maybe I can clean it up with some tone and color. So dark in the background, dark underneath, dark in the control arm there. And then we need to, we need to redraw and clarify what these arms are about here. So we have like top arm, forearm, hand, and then uh, kind of, I guess this is like top of claw. So like imagine all the all the fingers together and then thumb underneath. I think that's cool. That kind of works. And then we'll just lighten it. So we want to expose the top of that, top of that claw. Side of the claw. Upper side of the claw. The joint. Joint bit. So we want to solidify this the best we can. A little lighter, a little brighter, a little higher contrast. Yeah, there we go. And then we can add a little bit of that red in there later where there's some rust. That's fine. Cool. All right, that, so that makes some decisions and clarifies that. And behind there, really subtly, we'll have the joints of the back leg. All right, yes, yes, crabs usually have more legs. I'm not going to draw all six crab legs. That might be for another podcast. This is going to be a quadruped crab uh, for now. You know, the, end, the guy who made this ran out of time. So I really wanted to do six, but I just didn't have enough gears and crankshafts and all that kind of business. You have to deal with less crab legs, man. Slightly less contrast on the back side. So we want to we want that to kind of disappear in the fog, and we'll have the foreground is going to be the darker, more high contrast area. Cool. Then we got a little mouth. I don't know what he eats, but it's probably some kind of like refueling probe. So this is going to be just a little pincer that grabs the uh, oil hose or fuel hose that this dude runs on. I would assume Future Crab would run on biodiesel, like the algae-made diesel stuff that Exxon's working on with the Navy. I think that's it's that green kind of fluid stuff. He's probably got a tank. He's probably got a couple tanks that he can just sit out in the sun and light will come in, photosynthesize with the algae, 
and they you know take some like dead crab <laughs> dead crab bits or like seafood bits and that can rot away and kind of turn into some kind of alcohol that he can then burn for energy so it's really a mobile still like a mobile pot still is uh, what our crab friend is was all about today sensor package uh, on the end of these antenna things. I think that's interesting. A little sensor business. Let's get the light side on the top. It's pretty cool. Rusty joint. Rusty joint. Cool, cool. How are we doing? We're making progress. I think we're making some really good progress. What's up, Drew? Welcome back. Welcome back. Glad you're all with me today. It's a pretty popular stream today. It's a Tuesday, and we're making light of a dark situation. By drawing a crab from Oregon. I'm out of space. Actually, not out of space. Probably made by a previous generation. I love the narrative in Zelda Breath of the Wild that the technology from that game was made like a centuries ago, thousands of years before is when the high tech uh, civilization existed. And uh, there was a big calamity in the game that the era you're playing in is this period of recovery, but it's mostly primitivism, the tribal villages, and there's this kind of rotten old technology, this high tech nuclear fusion powered magneto uh, electronic kind of stuff that the player is learning how to use again. There's a couple scientists in this universe are figuring out, oh, how does this, this computer thing, how does this work? How do we upload images? And, um, and you're, you know that the high-tech stuff is where you need to get to. And it's little hints, like maybe there was flying machines. Somewhere in the back of a laboratory is a wing and you, it's this dramatic irony where you, the player, live in the 20th century, 21st century, and you know what wings look like and what technology looks like, but the characters in this universe don't understand what this magical, these magical devices are. It's kind of like if you went suddenly to one of those lost tribes in the Amazon and you found them like taking apart an airplane that had crashed in the wilderness. You're like, oh, I know what that is. They don't. They have no idea what these like plastic, lightweight carbon uh, composite materials are. And they're like, it's like that movie, The Gods Must Be Crazy, where a Coke can falls from the or Coke bottle falls from the sky, and it's transparent and it's the strongest material they've ever seen. And they're all fighting over like what this mystic, mythical um, object is. That's Pretty interesting uh, opening. I don't know about the rest of the movie. I got bored with it pretty quick, but that opening scene I thought was pretty cool. And then one of the villagers volunteers. This thing's evil, and it's driving a wedge between us. People are fighting over this thing we didn't even know existed. Uh, I need to go into the wilderness and uh, throw it back to where it came from. There was some, some guy in an airplane that was drinking a Coke and threw it out the window and landed in this Sahara, um, savanna, deserty business place. There it is again, business. Thanks, Nathan Heaslet, for permanently changing my vocabulary with uh, business. I feel right. Brandon's talking about crab with his buddy. Very good. Very good. Glad you get your crab on. It's a little winglet kind of thing. I don't know if that makes sense. I like the silhouette on the right where the head is coming off to the right. Pretty strong. Uh, shadow underneath the arm. Antenna thing. I don't like that it's just going straight out. I kind of want it to do uh, something else instead. I'm going to go, you know, yeah. I think I'm just going to redraw that to come down. And then come back up. Yeah, that's better. Real quick, darker. So that that this arm should actually be smaller than the close arm. So because it's further away from us, so we'll just paint over that, paint over that, and then draw just a little bit smaller. Yeah, there you go. Doing the walk like the Egyptian pose. So, Cool. 
That's fun. We'll try it in the other arm is in the foreground. Just a little bit different. In the other hand, see joint, see grab a hand here and then claw. We have side of claw, probably silhouette of the negative space in the background. Gotta remember about that. It's the edge of the shell over there. All right. Oh no, 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 that's not right. If this if this leg is here, then the other leg would probably be over here. Yep, that's it. Alright, so this is gonna be the negative space here. So compositionally, we have that other arm is, is overlapping. It's good to have some negative space to make sure your, your objects bounce up off of each other. So I'm going to leave the negative space around the front uh, arm. And then the, the, the arm that's more distant away from us is going to mostly be overlapped with the leg behind it. Not ideal, but go with it for now. So the, the leg behind it is going to be mostly shadow, and so the arm in front of it is going to be a little bit lighter, and I think that will uh, make it work. What is the nature of this control arm? Clean that up, clean that up. I got some waves. It's a little brighter there. This is a joint, joint there. It means we need a joint there. How is this working? How is this perspective? Does this make any sense? No joint is there. Joint's there. So I'm losing that little claw hand in front of the back leg. I might solve this problem later. I'd like to Maybe just a little warmer. So like let me layer on this glaze on a little bit of yellow. Just to just to give it some color contrast off of the blue leg behind it. So at least for myself I can I can kind of tell what's going on. Is there one specific light source for this scene? I don't know. I think the sun's probably occluded behind the sky. There's probably a, a dominant directional light, but uh, it's really all over pretty ambient in this scene. In this scene, right now we have this. The top of the crab is very similar in color with uh, the background. We're gonna keep this green kind of ocean theme going on with it. It's gonna lightly glaze in, maybe thirty percent. A little bit of color on that shell just so that it 
distinguishes itself from the sky background. Be a little yellower and brighter, softer at the top. Like a sea turtle kind of shell color. I think that's good. Yeah, it feels pretty good. We have these little horn shapes, antenna shapes up on top. What's up, Sven? Thanks for hanging out. Glad you dig the drawing. We got an O's fan up here. That's uh, riding a crab is what's happening. Ben did some really fun YouTube streams of uh, some video games we worked on or played. Sven so uh, ran a Weasel Zone, a really fun broadcast. My favorite of Sven's videos is where he loses his mind playing Get Over It. Damn funny. Look up Weasel Zone on YouTube. Much hilarity if you're into video games. Weasel zone. The cool stuff. Hope it's all going well for you. Uh, Sven, are you working from home or are you going to your little office? Very curious. Because the office doesn't have many people in it. And you could keep your social distancing in that office pretty easily, I would assume. But then again, it is a shared um, space. What's up, what's up, what's up? Let me know how you guys are doing out there. Whoever's tuned in, are you uh, having an okay quarantine time or are you losing your mind a little bit? I was losing my mind yesterday. I was doing a stream with my buddy Dustin and it was about landscape painting and it started out nice and strong. Let's save this. Let's save this uh, file before I get lost because who knows? Get hit by lightning, could lose. Everything we're working on. It's good at least to try to save it a little bit. Let's call it Crabs. Uh, uh, crab Robot. Robot. I hear the hard drive spinning up. It's taking a little bit. Boom. Move that off. And go to doing yesterday. Yesterday I was supposed to draw this landscape with Dustin and what did we do with it? Well um, we put a tank on it is what we did later doing. We had to make it interesting for Tom so Tom drew a mobile gun carriage on top of uh, a beautiful landscape in the background. That's that's how we had to deal with uh, Dustin's landscape yesterday. And I was losing my mind until I made that decision. We're gonna add some armor to it. That's what we're doing here. We're using robots to practice our landscape painting. And whatever crutch you need to do, it's fine by me, dude. Fine by me. Whatever, whatever thing you need to do to make it interesting for yourself. No, it doesn't hurt anybody. No sea foam. So this back leg is going to still be in the water. Maybe it's got a little splish, splishy splash, taking a bath kind of thing happening. Probably some water coming off of it. You know, there's going to be some drops and stuff. I don't really know. I got to think about how I'm going to do that. Uh, certainly some more of the seaweed, though. We're going to have some, some more seaweed coming off of the. Uh, and draped in and stuck in different places. Definitely around the joints. That'd be cool. Again, primary objective. What is, is this communicating an idea? Is is all the major decisions made? You gotta zoom out and take a look at it. 
what am I thinking? I think I think I need more on the right side. Maybe some just some sky, something to uh, make this whole area more interesting and balanced with the other side of the canvas. I'm just gonna go abstract and have some fun, more emotive kind of sky. Maybe a little bit more saturated sky as we go to the top of the canvas. So 30%, 20%. Does that help? Maybe a little bit. A little bit. See, this character's looking off at nothing. Um, if we've established the shoreline is on the left, let's try something. I'm going to copy this whole uh, robot guy in the middle and copy it, paste it, and then flip that. Edit, transform, flip, just the robot. Does this suddenly make more sense if he's coming in towards the land that we're suggesting on the left? So that's before, after. Let me mask it a little bit because we're losing the White House over there. Something like that. Assuming it way out. I like him going that way better. I think I want one of his legs to be like, like in motion, like in stepping mode. Like one, one, one of these four legs is going to be up. And it looks like maybe the, the foot on the right is, is kind of getting there. Yeah, I think that's a little better. We'll go with that. Um, so I'm just going to copy the. Oh, leave the process. So we'll call it Control Shift C, copy everything, paste. And then we can turn all these other background layers off and maybe make a folder for it called uh, development. And all that stuff goes in there. And then we have our new layer. Let me brighten it a little bit. Let's see how our levels are doing. So we, we, I tend to draw in the dark middle and that way I can go lighter really easily. So I'm gonna crank this thing up, make it a little brighter for you guys on the stream. A little brighter day, that's cool. That's cool. Um, uh, thinking about which leg to move. Like, it'd be easiest to just draw a shadow on this front leg and pretend that that leg is getting picked up right now. So maybe we'll do that just because it's easier and faster. And we just have the shadow kind of underneath that business. It's pretty obvious which leg is uh, right here. So it's kind of coming off the sand. And then there'll be some kind of imprint, maybe where the leg was, where the foot just was. Silhouette of the back leg back here. That's cool. That's cool. Silhouette of a the distant shoreline. Looks a little closer up. A little bit of that sky reflection. It's going to be reflection off water of the sky is going to be a little darker, a little less saturated. Still there.
Brandon likes to flip. Thanks, Brandon. Glad you approve. more shadow, some lightness, and again, what are the most important decisions that we can make at any given time? You gotta keep your macro eyes open, like what is the outside? Uh, does, does this thing communicate the image and size and proportion and shape that I want it to? Is it friendly? What's the mood? This is something my, my teacher, one of my favorite teachers at MICA was talked about. Uh, what does it make the viewer feel? You know, how does this make me feel? Am I curious? Am I scared? Am I running for the hills? Am I going to stock up on harpoons to deal with the, the invasion of the crab monsters? TNT, dynamite, torpedoes, vintage World War II naval mines. What am I going to get to defend myself against this? Well, if it's a friendly creature, I don't need to defend myself against it. I'm going to be more curious. I want to see what he's all about. Go up and go up and talk to him a little bit. Yeah, dude, what what's your motivation? Listening to that new Billie Eilish album yet? What are you into? You get you must get some pretty thumping whale song underwater. You know, is there like DJ humpback whale down at twenty thousand leagues who keeps you entertained uh, when you're on fishing? DJ Humpback. That's what I would. Uh, that's what I would do. Go full Notre Dame, like Gothic, French, deep EDM. You know, broadcasting from the charred remains of Notre Dame, Notre Dame, and uh, that'd be pretty cool. That might be. That might be the next broadcast. Is uh, DJ Humpback Notre Dame? I think that'd be fun. Feel bad though. That was that was a big tragedy. I've been to Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Montmartre, Paris. It's beautiful. Food's incredible. Food's incredible out there. Can't knock them. I know uh, Ian from Forgotten Weapons, aka Gun Jesus, big fan of the French, the Famas, the Chocha. Um, I've heard it said that the French. And us don't get along as well as we should because we're very similar. We don't like we don't like other people telling us what to do. Us being Americans, that's why the stay at home like stay at home orders just like aren't really sticking. Because you know, I heard it said on a primary and secondary modcast this week, last week, that we're like Americans are first place finishers in the don't care what anyone tells us to do contest. <laughs> we're not a compliant people. That's why law enforcement's so hard in this country. Because think about it. Everyone that lives in America, except for the Native Americans who were here before us, um, came from somewhere else that they weren't satisfied with. And they're crazy enough to get on a rickety ship or an airplane, like s spend a lot of the wealth that they've accumulated in whatever home country you're from, and take a giant risk. Either crossing the ocean or... Um, whatever to be here to be here now if you were taken against your will if your family was taken to this country against your will that's a different issue of course but I'm talking about the majority of people who are here um, did it volunt like their families went somewhat voluntarily so those people uh, the those who evolved or were birthed from that group are not actually going to be predisposed to be risk takers and uh, non-compliant with whatever standards of society have been made in the homeland. I think now some of that some of that culture still came over, and I think culture is good. Yeah. 
So this crab just wanted to have a look for itself. What are these what are these Americans all about in Oregon over here? I hear this place is pretty good. They got some good food. You got a lot of green colored stuff. We had this, uh, that was my road trip. We had some Dungeness Crab sandwich out there. Mm. Good breweries out there. Rogue Brewing Company out there. Oregon. Mm. Portland. Great town. Great town. Dream of the 90s is alive in Portland, as Fred Armistead uh, famously wrote. I like the one about the 1890s, the dream of the 1890s, like people brewing their own beer and growing fancy mustaches, alive and well. In Portland. Portland was cool. Beautiful waterfalls out there. Just lovely green nature. If you can't afford to go to Ireland, Portland might be a poor second best place to go, especially with flights being cheap right now. Go to, go to Portland. Go to Washington. Go to Oregon. Traffic in Seattle was pretty rough. Sorry, my man Dana, who lives out there. We visited him, and uh, congratulations on new baby girl. Hope she's good, my man Dana. Probably not tuning into the web stream, uh, but still a good person nonetheless. We visited him, and by my goodness, that traffic in Seattle is like almost getting to be LA terrible. Like during the day, it's okay. That's the difference between Seattle and LA, of course, is like LA traffic all the time, awful. Right where the 10 meets the 5 and also forget about it. Forget about it. It's terrible. Thinks you want to. Move to Washington, <laughs> Golden, Colorado, somewhere else. Makes you want to get out. Uh, Seattle, rush hour, it's pretty bad. Then again, I mean, Maryland's got problems both beltways. 695, 495, D.C., 695, Baltimore. Rush hour, forget about it. You don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. I think this work from home movement is catching on, and I think uh, it's here to stay. At least I hope so. Like if you can, shoot, if you can spend, if your company can spend four grand building you a workstation from home, let's say you have a computer job. If you don't, that's fine. If you have like a construction job, of course you have to go where you have a customer service job, medical job, you have to be where the client is. Sure. Uh, but um, if you're a digital kind of banker or artist or programmer or something, I think you can do a lot from home one or two days a week. And to save that gas money, support your local business where you live. Like right now, like I miss, I used to work in Hunt Valley, Maryland. And all the lunch places are there. Like Bagel Works, my favorite place to eat lunch. Get a tuna salad with bacon and provolone on an everything bagel. Oh, it makes me so happy. Um, so uh, we, we, got, we got Big Apple Bagel up in Shrewsbury, but it ain't no Bagel Works. I mean, they try. They're doing a good job. They're, but they're trying. They're not the same though. Like, Bagel Works is just a jam. Just a jam. So I missed that place. I actually drove down there yesterday. Got myself a uh, sausage, egg, and cheese to go. Got a um, tuna salad on everything with lettuce, tomato, onion, bacon, provolone. Look, you don't get to be this big eating veggies every day to get. To get here, you gotta get some bagels in you. <laughs> oh man, Brandon! Brandon, I know you're still out there. I'm thinking about some chicken wings, real hard, man. Oh, this is all over. We're gonna we're gonna feast on some chicken wings. A big old pitcher of beer. Something, something like that. Need some like, more barnacles and stuff on here. Some more interesting little bits, little details. I mean, maybe you camouflage this. If this was your crab, you put some you know, fun paint scheme. Maybe some like weird numbers and letters and business. Something like that. This guy on top doesn't have uh, any kind of uh, work done on him yet, so gotta do, gotta, gotta do that. Or a T-shirt. If he's an Orioles fan, he's probably wearing black. He's probably wearing black. You know, is a uh, in memorandum of having a team that was once good. Uh, you're gonna wear in the dark. 
logo of the Baltimore Orioles. Um, probably with a smaller, like little, little logo in it. Because if you're out in Oregon, I mean, and you're wearing an East Coast baseball team, they might they might frown upon that. So uh, our Baltimore Dundalk hipster guy, maybe he's from Hamden. He's got his little mustache because he wants to fit in with the the elite of Portland, but still wants to represent his local colors. So he's got the orange of uh, of Baltimore. He's probably got a sleeve tattoo that involves the Calvert flag. That's what I would do if I was him. And then uh, he's got his hands up. Running out of energy, folk. Where are we at? One hour twenty-five. We're gonna wrap this up in five minutes. Hmm. Wondering what um, this is about. Someone posted something about game stuff. I'll reply to that in a minute. Brandon says, uh, I never had Dungeons Crab. What would you say it's more like? Maryland Blue Crab, Snow Crab, or King Crab? Well, I haven't had Snow Crab or King Crab in a long time either. And it was in the patty. And it was soft. It was spiced. And it tasted, uh, tasted kind of like Maryland Crab. You know, without the little grittier, little... Uh, well, no Old Bay, of course. They don't put the Old Bay on it out there. I think, like, a Maryland crab cake is, like, the best, right? The best crab. And I've had other kinds of crab and lobster and stuff like that, but it's been a while. I've never been, like, excited about it. But if you go down to Coco's in Lauraville and get little bad Maryland crab cakes, oh, my God, it's just juicy and delicious. It's juicy, flavorful. They got that sauce. I mean, it ain't cheap. It's like 30 bucks for a crab cake, but you get a lot of crab cake for that. You get a lot of back fin meat. Some kind of rope. Some kind of rope thing. Like, I'm generally a beef guy. If there's beef available on the menu, I'm usually going to go for that first, except when I'm in the Pacific Northwest, because that. They know what they're doing with seafood, and I think it tastes different. I had some great seafood out there, and it's not fishy at all. It's fresher, and I just think, well, the salmon, for instance, is partly raised uh, or grown in fresh water, and so I think it has less of the sea taste to it and more of that fresh water taste to it. It's not as fishy. The salmon out in Seattle is a different animal. It's so good. So it's not the Atlantic salmon that we get out here. It's Pacific salmon. It's just a bomb. It's fresh, it's juicy, it's light, and uh, it's got just enough flavor to remind you that you're having fish. I mean, they just know what they're doing out there. They're professionals at smoking that salmon. So you put that on a bagel out there. So it's amazing. They have the best salmon in the world, but their bagels, eh, okay. They're no bagel works. They're no East Coast. I, New York, Connecticut friends, you know what bagels are. Let's do bagel back in Connecticut. Uh, God, it's so good. Get a, get a salt bagel from Let's do bagel. It's like a French style bagel, but I don't know what to call it. I'm liking my hand tonight sitting on front of uh, the top of the crab here. It's feeling pretty good. Get your crabs on. Ball to ball. Be more. Be more careful. Be more careful, Baltimore. I wonder if this is going to make Baltimore safer or more dangerous. Uh, this whole uh, shelter in place, stay home kind of business. Or is it still just as terrifying or more so than ever? Baltimore. Earlier today, talking to some wonderful art students who were attending the Maryland Institute College of Art, my alma mater, but uh, virtually, virtual conference. I think they're still home. I don't know if they're back on campus yet. I would assume not, because they went home for spring break. Poor kids. Dude's uh, up there. So dude is pretty high contrast. I'm going to take his background color at 10% and just glaze over him, knocking him back just a little bit. That's cool. All right, I'm going to establish some of the rocks in the foreground. 
a little bit more. I should have worked in my friend Chris Gobiel into this armor. He would, I think, he would appreciate this. Uh, this one's gonna go out to my buddy Chris Gobiel because he's not. Uh, he doesn't get enough love these days, and uh, he, he's all about Baltimore. Um, I think he moved away, but he still has got it in his blood. Uh, good dude, good dude. Got a, turned a, to a popular eatery in hand in Maryland all the way around from bank, near bankruptcy to total functionality again. That would be the Golden West. Golden West had like four years of back taxes owed. And back rent and back power, like they were in this terrible financial situation. And my my man came in there as a general manager and cleaned it up. Like got some discipline in the workers again. Um, took some responsibility, cleaned it up. Kind of brought in an iron fist. Probably pissed a lot of people off, but left Golden West in a much better place than when he found it. And that's kind of what we hope, just for society, right? Like each of us hopefully can make our mark on the world in a way that leaves the world better than how we found it. All right? That's all you can hope for. Look, I, I, I used to think that it's good enough to be alive and not hurt anybody. If you can just make it through this life and not uh, hurt your fellow man or woman or person, then uh, you did a good job. You know, that's, that's probably good enough. You're born, you have this opportunity to do some work, you contribute one thing to society, Maybe you serve a coffee to the person that solved cancer, you know, fixed cancer. And that was all you had to do. Like your, your rule. There's so many people out there that every little straw like that's laid on top of the pile that is civilization that makes that pile bigger is probably a good thing. You know, don't, don't get too hard on yourself. Or maybe a little bit. Be hard on yourself a little bit. Like once a month. It's okay to be hard on yourself, but then you just know that tomorrow it's going to be sunny. Get over the doldrums. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I was really upset the other day. I was really upset uh, over the weekend. I had a great week of streaming last week, and uh, it was the weekend time. I'm not going to stream, and I'm just kind of coming down off of that serotonin high. And it was uh, sad. I was sad for a little bit Friday, Saturday. I had to recover. Take it easy. Drink some water. Got to say hydrate. Water's good. Then get back after it. Then Monday was weird. Then today's good. Today's a good day. Drawing crabs, all my friends. So this was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. We're going to wrap the sucker up. It's been an hour and 33 minutes, and that is three times longer than the normal human being's attention span for silly art creation. So we're going to wrap this puppy up. just want to put a little bit of brightness here. What are the most important things to finish on this uh, this scene that we have right now? Maybe a little bit more uh, blue, a little blue sky coming from there. Some lines are coming in from the outside that take our eye towards the crab guy. Let's blend the sky in just a little bit more here. That's fun. Yeah, that's kind of fun. That's cool. A little more highlight on this, this top antenna there. Um, I want to get that clouds to continue through this shape there. That's cool. All right, all right, all right. And the lighter underneath. That's fun. The rocks, a little like lichen and stuff up in the foreground there. Paint over some of these black lines. Crab feast. I'm not, you know, Brandon, thanks for the in invitation to go crabbing. Like, I don't love crab enough to make a whole day of it, but uh, thanks for the invite, though. Thanks for the invite. Maybe someday. I mean, I like being on the water. Being um, being on a dock, hanging out, drinking a light beer. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's kind of stuff's good. Didn't do as much landscape studying as I probably should have today. I might do another stream where I'm looking at more reference and trying to get uh, better 
uh, landscape kind of development. But for what I wanted to do, this is pretty good. We're going to darken just the edge by that, um, by the cove there. And there's some darker. And then there's the little squishy, splashy foam bits on the water. I think that's cool. There we go. A little bit of like lighter, lighter area in there. Pretty sweet. And where the water meets like the sand, the sand's got to be a little darker because it's wet. So there really would be an edge there. So let's make that edge a little bit harsher, a little clearer, and a little that sea foam color where the where the water is at the edge of the sand. There we go. That's that's feeling better. That's feeling better. That's what we needed. So what? So the shadow's obvious, the legs obvious, the toes are obvious. It's cool. So this is gonna be wet. How do we make it look wet? We put little drops on it. Little highlights on it. This foot's gonna be in the water here. It's a bit dark underneath. High energy, high energy mark making, pretty cool. Wrapping it up, making sure our silhouettes are good. Grab arms, good. Not loving the back hand, but we're gonna have to work with it. We're just gonna have to deal with it for now. That's an interesting shape. Cool, cool. Right in the top of that. Get rid of like the black marks. Just want to have it more in color with stuff. Just get my green up top. It's gonna be. Let's go over with a, a soft round. We're gonna do a quick overlay layer and see if we can punch this up a little bit. Make this layer overlay, and then we're gonna flip the canvas to see it fresh. Flip horizontal. Again, it's offside. Let's crop it in just a little bit. This crop tool gives us the power points to uh, see if, if things are lined up in an interesting way. Uh, front leg is in the left lower power point. Right leg, let's make that the right power point. That's pretty good right there. Boom, that looks good. And we're gonna overlay using the soft round opaque brush and then throw in some colors to kind of punch up uh, the distance and the volume of stuff. So maybe light, maybe some blue. In the background there, see, look at that overlay. It's just giving us a little bit more of that color and a little bit more gold, kind of yellow, um, green in the foreground. So just going to brighten that up. And then I'm just going to pump the color just a little bit more. And then a little green glow for that eye. That's cool. That's fun. And then to, to go darker with just the shadow area underneath, layer a little blue underneath, and then behind the arms, just darken, darken the joints, darken the underbelly of the crab, increasing the overall contrast. There we go. There we go. That's, that's good. Shadow that area. Underneath, that's cool. Mm -hmm. We didn't really get to resolve a lot of these trees and environment, but we're just out of time. We're going to have to develop that for another podcast, another time. So we got a little crabby guy, a little more highlight here, why not? A little bit warmer there, why not? Boom, good, cool. That was fun. I hope you all find something fun and productive to do with your day, and thanks for hanging out with me. That was really fun. Hope you had a good day. And I uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your week as all. Oh, thanks so much. And uh, see you maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after that. I got some meetings, so I might be busy. Sorry for the irregular scheduling time, but 
Uh, we'll get back at it. We'll get back after it. Take care.